Hey, hi. Linear regression uses gradient descent under the hood. There are three versions of gradient descent. You have your stochastic gradient descent, you have batch gradient descent, and you have a mini batch version of gradient descent as well. In this video, I aim to cover all the three using Python. So I hope you enjoy the video. In this video, I aim to bring out the differences between different versions of gradient descent. So let's get started by importing the necessary modules. I have also defined a function called as timeit, which measures the time of different function calls. So this would be useful in comparing the different versions of gradient descent. The next thing that I do is I make use of the make underscore regression function from sklearn.datasets library to create a simple dataset containing one feature and one target column. My target column would be continuous in nature, thus making it a regression problem and not a classification problem to solve. I have chosen around 10,000 samples in my data set and I have also included some amount of noise as well as a particular random state set to a value of 2019. So let's see the scatter plot of x and y. As you can clearly see, there is a clear linear relationship in the positive direction between x and y. So I want to find out the best fit line using different versions of gradient descent on the 10,000 samples that I've created using the make underscore regression function. So the way you go about doing this is firstly, we'll find out the slope and the intercept of the best fit line using the linear regress function of the scipy.stats package. And we find out that the slope is 10.65 and the intercept is 0 0.28. If I use the slope and intercept values and draw a line with the scatter plot, this is what my best fit line would look like. So ideally using a package, we are getting a slope of 10 and an intercept of 0.28, which is what we have to realize using the different versions of gradient descent, that is batch gradient descent, stochastic gradient descent and mini batch gradient descent. So our aim of this experiment is to reach at these two values, that is 10.65 and 0.28 using the different variants of gradient descent. So let's proceed ahead. I also have to reshape my y target variable because it was in one dimension and I have to make it a two dimensional array with 10,000 rows in one column. So I do that by using the reshape function. Now I am assuming that you all know how gradient descent works. This is the whole mathematics surrounding gradient descent. The first step is to initialize the weights with random values and calculate the cost, which is the difference between the predicted value and the actual values. The next step is to calculate the gradient, that is the change in cost when the weights, that is intercept and slope are changed by a small value from their originally randomly initialized value. This helps us move the values of slope and intercept in the direction in which my cost is minimized. So that is calculated using the gradient computation. After you have computed the gradient, we adjust the weights with the gradients to reach the optimum values where the cost is minimized. The next step is use the new weights for prediction and to calculate the new cost that comes around. Repeat this step that is calculation of the gradient and the weight update till further adjustments to the weight don't significantly reduce the error or the cost function that you have. That is how simplistically gradient descent reaches to the optimum values of weights. Now, reiterating all of this in Python using code is what I have done here. Going back to the first step, here I have defined a function called as cal underscore cost, which calculates this cost value. The cost is basically square of sum of all the differences of your prediction and your actual target values. So I import this cost function as well. Now the first version of gradient descent is called as batch gradient descent, which is what I've described in this given function. Batch gradient descent computes a gradient using the complete training data set. This is great for convex or relatively smooth error manifolds. In this case, we move somewhat directly towards an optimum solution, either local or global. So I just talked about the different steps of gradient descent. In step two, when you calculate the gradient, that is change in your cost with respect to weights that in our case is intercept and slope. For one calculation of gradient, we would require the entire training data set for one iteration. In case of very large data sets, using batch gradient descent can be quite costly since we are only taking a single step for one pass over the training set. 
Thus, the larger the training set, the slower our algorithm updates the weights and the longer it may take until it converges to the global cost minimum, assuming that the cost function is convex in nature. So I've just tried to replicate the steps that I've mentioned for taking into account all the training samples of X and Y into our gradient descent algorithm. So when I run this cell, the function is now included into memory. And let's start by having 100 iterations with a learning rate of 0.05, starting with a theta from a Gaussian distribution. So now when I run this, the function takes around 156.16 milliseconds. The reason being it's a very small training data set of just 10,000 rows and I'm able to reach at an intercept value of 0.287 and the slope value of 10.651 with the final cost function having a value this big. If I now compare it with the existing library implementation, the slope was 10.65 and the intercept was 0.28. So I'm able to reach the same values using batch gradient descent in around 1000 iterations. Let's even go further to find out when has this overall thing converged to that global minimum value. So if I go down, I see that I don't require all the 1000 iterations. I can see convergence happening below 200 iterations itself. If I look closely at around 60 iterations, the cost kind of becomes flat. So now if I zoom into the plot, all of this is verified again by visualizing the plot. After 60, there is no change in the cost that is happening. So it's almost reached the global minimum value for the cost function. And thus we've already converged in 60 iterations. The good part of using batch gradient descent in the current scheme of things was that we didn't have a lot of samples, we just had 10,000 samples. So the weight update and the gradient calculation was not computationally that heavy and thus it was able to converge very fast. Let's look at the next class of gradient descent that is stochastic gradient descent. I again repeat in batch gradient descent for calculating the gradient we make use of the entire training data set that is there. Stochastic gradient descent, however, computes the gradient using a single sample. Here, the term stochastic comes from the fact that the gradient based on a single training sample is a stochastic approximation of the true cost gradient. Due to its stochastic nature, the path towards the global cost minimum is not direct, as in case of batch gradient descent but may go zigzag if we are visualizing the cost surface in a 2D space. However, it has been shown that stochastic gradient descent almost surely converges to the global cost minimum if the cost function is convex in nature. One benefit of stochastic gradient descent is that it's computationally a lot faster. So let's now import this function and keeping a learning rate of 0.05 and going over 100 iterations, Let's see if we are able to converge at the optimum values of slope and intercept. This function may take some time. The reason being you are sending in all the samples firstly into the function and randomly picking out one sample. So randomly picking out one sample from a sample size of 10,000 is time consuming because you randomly have to select that sample and then run stochastic gradient descent on it. So the computations have completed and you can see there is great amount of time spent in this function to find out the best fit line. We are able to reach the optimum values of slope and intercept with a certain value of cost function as well. Let's now visualize how has the cost changed with respect to change in iterations. So overall the cost has kept decreasing but as you can clearly see the path to the global minimum has not been a very smooth transition from up to down. It's followed a zigzag path because you pick out one sample, you calculate the cost and then update the cost based on that one sample. You're bound to have a noisy path in order to reach the global minima in case of stochastic gradient descent. So now let's come to the best of both the worlds, which is mini batch gradient descent. The way mini batch gradient descent works is rather than picking out one sample and having a noisy trajectory, we define a sample size or a batch size in terms of how we want to find out the cost and then update the weights accordingly. So in case of mini batch gradient descent, we 
decide a batch size in our case we have decided a batch size of 20 based on the training data set you can either choose 32 64 these are the common numbers that a lot of people use so for one weight update you're basically taking in 64 randomly sampled training points from your training data set and then finding out the cost and then updating the weights based on the cost that you have discovered so if i run this function and now if i find out the best fit line using mini batch gradient descent the time mini batch gradient descent would take would be lesser as compared to the stochastic gradient descent but still a bit more as compared to batch gradient descent so it combines the best of both the worlds so there is a good trade off between how much samples you require in the memory while computing the gradient and not have a noisy trajectory towards reaching the global minimum value so now my mini batch gradient descent function has computed its best fit line it has taken less time as compared to stochastic gradient descent but a bit more time as compared to batch gradient descent it's able to reach the optimum values of intercept and slope and if i plot the cost function i wouldn't see the noisy trajectory which my stochastic gradient descent followed if i zoom into this area a bit more i find that the convergence of mini batch gradient descent is even better than batch gradient descent and also it has the advantage of using less number of samples while calculating the gradient so this was my small attempt at bringing out differences between batch gradient descent stochastic gradient descent and mini batch gradient descent i hope you all enjoyed the video if you do have any questions with what we have covered in this video then feel free to ask in the comment section below and i'll do my best to answer those if you enjoy these tutorials and would like to support them then the easiest way is to simply like the video and give it a thumbs up and also it's a huge help to share these videos with anyone whom you think would find them useful please consider clicking the subscribe button to be notified for future videos and thank you so very much for watching